I'm Sarah Borks on Keto with NearEatsReat.com and welcome to Quick Study, a monthly review of REIT market developments with Brad Case, NearEats Senior Vice President for Research and Industry Information. So Brad, 2016 got off to a bit of a rocky start. How did REITs fare in all of this? Uh, January was a, tw was a difficult month for investors in really almost any asset class. Um, REIT investors saw their declines down by 3.5% during the month of January. That was actually good by the standards of most of the rest of the stock market. Uh, large cap stocks lost 5% during the month. Uh, small cap value stocks lost 6.7% during the month. Small cap growth stocks not lost nearly 11% during the month. So, you know, so it's good to have some portfolio diversification when when the market when it when it's a difficult uh, month for the markets as a whole, it's not necessarily um, as bad for real estate investors as it as it was for the rest of the stock market. Investors should really put that put that into a broader context. Um, we've seen uh, you know we've seen a lot of uh, economic uncertainty over the last three months, really since since about the end of October, and REIT investors um, have seen a decline of five percent during that three month period. Whereas the stock market investors have seen their decline, seen their holdings decline by 10 percent, so much less, uh, much less severe uh, decline in the REIT market than in the stock market. And if you go back to the end of August, um, uh, you know there was a period of, of two good months in September and October, but uh, since August, uh, uh, um, the stock market has really given away all its all its gains. It's really up. Uh, it's really back to about the point it was in the late August, whereas REIT investors have gained about 8% since the end of August. So it's important to keep, that, keep those, those benefits of diversification in mind, even when you're looking at a month like uh, January that was a tough one. So, Brad, we saw a lot of volatility last month. How should investors make sense of those issues? Yeah, well, you keep in mind that volatility really is a measure of uncertainty about asset values. And that uncertainty is coming from uncertainty about the course of the macroeconomic expansion. And here again, uh, it's important to keep in mind what investors are getting when they put together a diversified portfolio. What really separates REIT investments from the rest of the stock market is that the stock market, no matter which sector you're in, Almost without without exception, uh, stock market is giving you um, giving you uh, exposure to the business cycle, which is something like four years in average duration. Whereas REITs give you um, exposure to an entirely different set of earnings drivers, and that's the real estate market cycle, which has averaged something more like 18 years in, in duration. And we're really only halfway into this real estate market cycle. So although investors are responding to uncertainty about macroeconomic conditions, the, 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 the uncertainty um, is about conditions that really have a lot more to do with the with the uh, business cycle and the rest of the stock market than they do with the U.S. real estate market cycle. To give you an example, uh, U.S. REITs really don't have very much exposure to developments in other countries, whereas most of the rest of the stock market, those companies do have a lot of exposure to non-U.S. developments. So when we see uncertainty about what's happening in China or in Europe, and uh, you know that bleeds into the U.S. stock market because U.S. companies depend on earnings from from those non-U.S. markets. U.S. REIT, REIT investors really don't. Are we seeing a flight to safety within the REIT sector? Yeah, there's a lot of discussion of a flight to safety, and, and, and there's some evidence of that. You, you know, for example, if you look at the best performing segments of the REIT market during the month of January, the three best performing seg segments were uh, data centers, um, which, uh, which, which are now in their, their own classification as of late, late last year, um, but also self-storage and freestanding retail REITs. And what differentiates those is, you know, number one in, in the self-storage segment, we happen to have companies that don't use very much leverage, um, and that gives them some uh, some balance sheet uh, protection. Um, and in uh, and in the the freestanding retail, those companies tend to be triple net lease um, companies, wh where where you know they'll get the they'll get the rent. They don't have to worry about many of the market developments. So. So there is some evidence of a flight to safety. I'm not entirely convinced by the flight to safety story, but uh, but what we see what what we saw in terms of different uh, performance in different segments of the REIT market during January does fit a little bit with that story. Thanks very much, Brad. Brad. That's a pleasure, sir. And for more news and analysis and all things REIT, be sure to visit REIT.com.